Are you ready to witness a tale of bravery, creativity, and a touch of needle felting perseverance? One woman embarked on a mission to create something truly extraordinary. She dared to needle felt a realistic cat. And let me tell you, my friends, this was no easy task. Realistic cats are notoriously difficult to needle felt. At times, it seemed as though the cat would never come together, but she persevered. She will take you on a journey, showing you the techniques she used to bring the cat to life and sharing her triumphs and tribulations. Perhaps you'll even be inspired to try your hand at needle felting a realistic cat yourself. So buckle up, my friends, for this is a story of courage, creativity, and of the unbreakable human spirit. This is the tale of one woman's quest to needle felt a realistic cat. Whoa, 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 what the heck are you doing? I said give me a dramatic introduction, not make it sound like I'm about to climb Mount Everest. Um, yeah, I might have got a bit carried away. Just a bit. Anyway, let's get started. So in this video, I'll take you to the point where you've shaped the cat and coated it in a layer of coloured wool. This could be your finished cat, but if you'd like to add some fur using the fur technique, I'll explain how I did that in part two. But later on in this video, I'll explain why I decided to change the eyes and show you how I managed to do that. But for starters, to make sure I had the structure and proportions of the legs compared to the body right, I made an armature for this cat using pipe cleaners, also called chenille stems. To do this, you might want to check out my video on fearless armature that explains how you can follow a printed image of a cat skeleton. However, for this video, I've created my own simple cat armature template that you can download for free. Just follow the link in the description. This template makes a cat the same height as I decided to make mine, which is eight centimeters tall when sat down. That's about three and three sixteenths of inches. But the first thing I strongly recommend is don't try to make the cat as small as I did. This was a ridiculously small size to make a cat. You could print the template at about 150% which will give you a cat that's slightly bigger than mine at about 12 centimetres tall when sat down. That's about four and three quarter inches. Oh, things are cute. What's wrong with that? Yes, they are cute, but also there's literally less room for error. It means the proportions have to be spot on. If they're out by a sixteenth of an inch, it will look wonky. What's wrong with wonky? Um, nothing, Brian. You make wonky look good. But here we're trying to make a realistic cat, so on this occasion, wonky is not good. Because the cat was so small, I didn't really need the armature for support. It was more to help me get the proportions right. But now that I had the armature, next I found a picture of this tuxedo type of cat that looked very similar to a cat I used to have when I was growing up. The markings were almost the same. So I printed the image out so that the cat measures 8 centimetres in height. That's about 3 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. From her toes up to the top of her head, but not including her ears. This matches the height of cat that my armature is made for. So if you printed the armature template out at 150% then you'll need to print an image of the cat that is 12 centimeters or four and three quarter inches tall. This image will be very useful in making sure everything is in the right place and the right size. Next I need to start to shape the body of the cat by wrapping a layer of core wool around the middle section but not too thick for now. I'll show you how to build it up and shape it more later. Then I wrapped a thin layer of core wool around the front legs stabbing carefully with a thick 36 gauge triangular needle. Using a thicker needle will help prevent you from breaking your needles if you hit the wire armature. Try to stab down either side of the wire working your way around the leg. For the back legs you can be a bit more generous with the core wool. Here I added most of the wool just to the top of the leg. Cats have a lot of muscle in their back legs to help them jump so this top section is much thicker than the bottom half. At this point I was looking at it and thinking it looks a bit odd and quite frankly not very much like a realistic cat. But it's times like these when you have to trust the process. Looking at the cat's shape and referring to images of cats I realised it needed more wool to shape its belly but I didn't want to add more wool on top of its backbone so I rolled up a piece of core wool and wrapped it round from side to side so that I could felt it to the underside of the body. Don't worry if you can see where the piece joins onto the body too much at the moment as this will be covered by the black or coloured wool later when we cover it. Please don't forget to click the like button if you're enjoying this content. By doing this you'll help the needle felters find this video. At this point I decided the cat was going to be sat so I moved the armature so it's sat in the classic way that cats do. As the cat's joints are indicated on the pipe cleaner armature, it was a lot easier to get the shape of the sitting cat looking good. Positioning the cat helped me to see that it was still looking rather underfed and needed more core wool adding to its underbelly. So I folded up another piece of core wool and added it underneath, taking it up the sides to make those slightly wider too. I find it's always better to gradually build up the shape of an animal by adding a bit at a time like this. 
as it's often hard to judge how much the wall will fall down. The best advice I can give though is to keep referring to the images of the cat you're trying to make. Or if you don't have enough photos, you can turn to the internet. Here you can see I've just googled cat sitting and looked at lots of images of different cats in the pose I'm trying to replicate. This helped me see that the knee on their back legs, if you can call them that, aren't quite as defined as they are on my cat here, and the knee comes further up the body than mine did. So I wrapped some more core wool only around the top half of the back leg, so that the end of the wrapped wool could be attached to the body, which will help to make the leg slightly less defined. The knee of the cat now looks higher up the body, but they were a bit chunky at this point. She looks like she's been eating too many treats. Yeah. I'll come back to this later, but next I referred to my printed images that are the same size as the finished cat to see how long the neck is and where the head should go. I measured from my printed image onto a strip of paper the full height of the cat from its paws to the top of its head. This showed that the head will need to sit on the very end of the black pipe cleaner. So I added some more core wool around the cat's neck to build it up ready for the head to go on top. To start making the head, I've rolled up a piece of core wool, making sure not to roll too much wool up. It's better to make it too small, as we can always add some more wool to build it out and shape it. For now, I'm just going to shape it into a round ball with a thick 36 gauge triangular needle. The head of the cat is probably the most important part to get right. Too big or too small and it won't look right at all. Also, the shape is very subtle and the cat's head can vary in different breeds. Notice I've left a bit of unfelted wool where I'm going to attach the head to the neck though. Probably the most important part of the head to get right is the placement of the eyes. So before I felt the head too hard, I'm going to create the sockets for the eyes to sit in. I'm using my paper strip to look at my printed image to see how far down the head the eyes will sit. They're approximately halfway down the head. But the tricky thing here is it depends on the angle that the photograph was taken. This side view of the cat's head gives us a good indication though. But as I said at the time, it's difficult to sculpture, isn't it? So I've marked on the softly felted head where the first eye will go, about halfway down the head. Then I've measured with my strip of paper the distance between the centre of the cat's eyes and use this on my felted head to mark where the second eye will go. Then I've stabbed all round this mark to gradually make the socket larger. In this next part of the video, I'll be using one of the techniques that is described in the book Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. In this book, Betty Edwards describes how the left brain is responsible for naming things. So as I look at the shape of the cat's head, I'm going to avoid naming the parts and instead just concentrate on looking at where the head changes angle. And by doing this, it will help to access the right side of the brain that's good at judging angles and distances and avoid wakening the left brain by not naming things. When you look at the side view of a cat's head, you can see that just above the eyes, the outline changes angle and slants back towards the top of the head, almost in a straight line. So I'm using the angle of my needle to create that shape by stabbing at 90 degrees to the surface angle I want the head to be. Then I've realised that this area needed building out from the head. So I've added a small piece of rolled core wool and I'm going to add another small piece of wool in between the eyes. I think part of the reason it's quite difficult to see the cat's head shape is that it's covered in fur. If you look at this bold sphinx breed of cat, the head looks a lot smaller than our tuxedo cat, and the fur on the cheeks makes the head look wider than it actually is. So if you're going to add fur to the head, which I will show you how to do in part two, then you're going to need to make sure this head is smaller than the printed picture to make allowances for the fur we're adding later. But also bear in mind that different breeds of cats have different shaped heads. Also, don't forget to keep checking that your eye sockets are the right distance apart. This was one of the major downsides to me making this cat so small. The tiniest bit out will show more than it would on a larger cat, but then a larger cat would involve more stabbing and probably take longer to make. Now we've come to a decision that I later regretted. I decided I would paint some 6mm black beads with green acrylic paint, coat them with a gloss glaze to make the cat's eyes, and then sew the beads into the head. I stabbed the wool into a round recess until the beads fit into the hole. Then I took some cotton and sewed the beads in. Later I decided to take these beads out and replace them with a better alternative. But for now I'm continuing to add more pieces of wool building up the area between the eyes. I wonder what cute thing Julie is needle felting this time. Ooh, what the heck is that? Yeah it looks a bit odd at the moment but try not to worry about that too much. It'll come together in the end. I've never attempted to needle felt a realistic cat like this before so it's all good learning. <clears throat>
You needle felted me. I'm a cat. Uh, yeah, you're a cat. I hate to tell you this. You're not exactly a realistic looking cat. How rude. I realised the head needed a bit more shaping at this point, so I looked at an image of a cat again and built up the cheekbones with some more small pieces of core wool that I'd rolled up and roughly stabbed into a curved shape to go under the eye. I also added yet another piece to build up between the eyes. At this point it looked a bit of an odd shape, so referring to my picture of a cat from the side, I defined the mouth area as you can see from this picture of before and after. It's amazing what you can do with just really looking at the curves and the shapes of the profile image and trying to replicate that with your needle. The more you have a go at this, the better you'll become though. So please keep trying. Now it's time to attach the head to the body. It's crucial to check that you're attaching the head at the right height when you do this. Are you making a giraffe? No, oh, cheeky. I've realised it's a bit too tall and used the awl to make a hole in the base of the head for the pipe cleaner to sit into and I've spread some of the spare wool out so that the head can sit a bit lower. Once I'm happy with the height of the head I've put some super glue on the end of the pipe cleaner and put the head into position. After leaving the glue to set I've needle felted the fuzzy wool around the neck to make the join even more secure. Looking at the front view of the cat it looks almost like the front legs are too long but this is because we need to add some more core wool across the top of the front legs round each side. This will also make the front legs look slightly shorter. It's at this point I notice that the left eye doesn't look quite right. The shape of the pupil seems to have changed. Some of the paint has been chipped off and the bright green paint does make it look a bit like an alien. So I ordered some 6mm green glass cat eye cabooshans from Etsy. I'll put a link to the ones I got in the description below. I'll show you how I changed the eyes in a moment. But while I was waiting for them to arrive, I start covering the paws with bright white merino wool. Because this cat always kept her paws clean. Make sure you only wrap a small amount around each paw as you don't want to make them too big. So then I set about removing the beads using a stitch ripper which made it fairly easy to cut the thread that was holding the beads in. The next thing I had to do was add a small ball of core wool to make the socket slightly less deep so that the flat backed glass eyes sit in the recess better. This is one of those moments I would do differently. I should have placed the eyes in the recesses and then checked that the centre of the pupils were the right distance apart. Using the stripper of paper we measured them with earlier. Instead, I checked where I thought the centre of the eyes would be without any eyes in the recesses. Then because the distance looked okay, I went ahead and glued both of the eyes in. But then when I checked the distance between the centre of the eyes, I found that the eyes were a bit too close together. Again, this is where making the cat so small makes these tiny distances show up more. I'll show you how I managed to manipulate them a bit further apart later. But next, she needs a nose. First, we need to know where her nose should go. Now if we were going to measure from the top of the head on our picture, it wouldn't give us an accurate position as the cat in the picture has fur on and our core wool shape doesn't. So I'm going to measure from the centre of the eyes down to the top of the nose and also mark the bottom of the nose as the centre of the eyes is a fixed point. Then on our felted cat I'm going to mark with my needle the top and the bottom of the nose. For the nose I took a very small piece of black wool and rolled it up into a ball between my fingers. Then holding it with another needle, stabbed it a few times and turned it over and stabbed it a few more times, but not a lot. Then I attached the wool to the mark at the top of the nose and then to the bottom mark. And as I stabbed it, I used the angle of my needle to make it triangular shape. Take note of the direction I'm stabbing in as I attach it. Next, I covered most of the cat with some black merino roving wool which was in the cheap pack of merino wool I reviewed from Amazon. It's okay, but it's a bit more wiry and isn't as soft as the merino roving I bought previously. I wrapped it around each leg, angling my needle and being careful not to stab the wire inside, leaving the paws white. I left the cat's chest uncovered for now as I'm going to put long white fur over that area, which I'll show you how to do in my next video, so don't forget to subscribe to see that. Oh, and if you click the like button, that would really help other needle felters to find this video. Also, when you're covering the face, don't forget to leave the bridge of its nose white. And I left just above its mouth white, as those are the markings that my pet cat used to have, which is slightly different from the image I'm using. So the distance between the cat's eyes was bothering me. I tried to force them apart with my fingers, but it wasn't working. Then I had an idea. What if I felt some more black wool between the bridge of the nose and the eyes to pack it out a bit? I thought this might move the glass caboose slightly. This and a bit more brute force with a sewing needle finally worked and made them that bit further apart. 
now to give the cat some ears. I measured the height of the ear on my reference picture and used this as a guide to draw out a template so that I could get both ears the same size and shape. However, on the first attempt, I laid down too much wool and the ears ended up too big, thick and bulky. They needed to be a lot thinner. So for my second attempt, I used less black wool, laying out only a thin layer that you could see through. And then I used this template to stab around to get the shape of the ear. When I peeled it up though, it looks like it was too thin, but I persevered, turning it over and stabbing the other side and folding a tiny bit more wool up from the fuzzy end to bulk out the centre of the ear a little bit. I held the ears between two rulers while I neatened up the edges and trimmed away any stray strands. It's hard to see here, but this was a lot thinner than the previous attempt. I made another thin ear, and then to make the inside of the ear furry, I cut some white merino roving wool up into short strands, about one centimetre or three-eighths of an inch in length, and laid the strands across the ear, then stabbed in a line down the middle with my 46 gauge crown needle. This is a very fine needle that is good for rooting fur or applying fine details. Then I folded one side over and stabbed along the line again to make sure the fur was secure. I added about three rows of white fur in this way to the inside of the ear. Then after fluffing the wool out, I trimmed it with some scissors so that it wasn't quite as long. This does push some white hair through to the back of the ear though, which you can try to stab back into the ear, or as I did here, get a small amount of black wool and felt it over the white wool to hide it. You might need to fluff up the white fur on the inside of the ear again when you've done this. Use your needle to comb it away from the ear, then trim any fuzzy bits with some scissors. Now to position the ear, I looked at the reference picture and noticed that the inner edge of the ear is in line with the centre of the eye. So I used this as a guide to mark on my cat where the inner edge of the ear should sit. Then also notice how I'm positioning the ear so that it's not pointing forwards, but pointing about 45 degrees to the side. I also checked using the measurement we took earlier that the height of the ear was about right. I then pinned both ears in place so that I could look at them both on the cat to see that they looked okay. Once I was happy I stabbed the two inches in place and around the base, attaching them with the unfelted wool I'd left at the base of the ear. By the way I'd love to hear in the comments how you think I'm getting on needle felting this cat. I know she's not quite perfect but hopefully you like her. Looking at the eyes though I felt they looked too open and a bit like the cat was frightened and not as relaxed and serene as the cat in my picture. So I rolled up a small amount of black wool and felted it into a bit of a strip. Then I attached it into the inner corner of the eye and along the bottom of the eye and cheekbone to the other side of the eye to try to make her eye slightly more closed and help her look calmer. Then I did the same with another piece of black wool, taking it across the top of the eye, almost creating an eyelid. I repeated this for the other eye and I think it was worth the effort. If you compare the image from before I did this to now, you can see how much calmer she looks. I then added a small piece of bright white merino roving to her nose. If you want to leave her like this, you can do. All you need to do is cover her chest with carded white wool and you'll have a cat. However, in my next video, I'll show you how to add some beautiful white merino wool to make her chest furry and add fur to her face and tail to take her from this to this. So make sure you're subscribed and choose to have all notifications switched on so that you don't miss that video. Thanks for watching.